Conference, I now have the pleasure to pass the chair to Luke Akehurst. Luke. Conference. Uh, good, good morning. I'm Luke Akehurst. I'm a member of the National Executive, uh, but I'm also very proud to be a ward councillor in the London Borough of Hackney. Um, I'm joined here today by fellow councillors Ben, Josie, James, and of course by Caroline, who wants to say a few words just to start us off. Thanks, Luke. Um, we had some great successes in the local elections this year, and it's so great to have uh, James and Josie and Ben here. Ben flying the fag in Dartmouth, Josie taking on the BNP and fighting for Labour getting the votes back in Barking and Dagenham, and James... Although I think elected in 2007, became the leader of the York Labour Group in 2010, and won for Labour in 2011. <laughs> and I think, James, you are our, the youngest uh, council leader in the country, am I right? In England. Oh, in England, okay, not bad. Anyway, look, the other point about this session is this. Uh, we did well to increase the number of candidates that we stood in the local elections this year, but we're behind the Tories. They have 93% coverage across the country. Now, look, we need to make sure that we're encouraging people to want to become candidates for our party because we haven't got a Labour name on the ballot paper. People can't vote Labour, and we've got to change that. So we're going to have a bit of a question and answer session and hopefully uh, these guys can inspire you to go away and think about standing yourself but going away and encouraging others. Great. Ben, um, can you tell us what it's like being the first Labour councillor in your area down in the South West for 14 years? Um, it's uh, an, an experience but very rewarding. Um, I never expected to win but it just shows if you go out there put in the work you can, um, we can win anywhere because like, I, I, uh, since 18 I've never been able to vote for a Labour candidate in my local ward, so if we put up candidates, there's pockets of support for Labour all over the country, which we're just not uh, getting into, and we're just, we just need to put candidates up everywhere we can. Right, and um, Josie, what was it like being part of Labour's amazing campaign to get rid of the BMP in Barking and Dagenham? Well, it was a fantastic achievement for um, our community, our party, and for me personally. I was part of um, a team, a ward team, made of two other councillors, and we worked very hard, but we were part of a bigger team across our, our borough, working very hard, and we were joined by people from all over the country, making a stand against fascism and racism in this country. And One of the best parts of it and most rewarding parts of it for me was listening to people on the doorsteps, listening to my residents and the, the residents in the borough and listening to the, their concerns and talking to them about their, their concerns. And that, for me, was um, almost uh, preparing me for my role as a councillor because that's what I do as a councillor, listening to people and talking to people about their concerns. Great. Uh, James, um, can you tell us a bit about the experience of being, I'll make sure that, that I get this correct, the, young, the youngest council leader in, in England? It, it, it's exciting and, and it's daunting at the same time. Uh, I keep telling everyone that I didn't have any grey hair before being elected. Um, but it, it really is an, an honour and a privilege that me, a, a, as an ordinary 29-year-old, you know, the son of a, a single-parent dinner lady can, who was written off you know, as growing up uh, by the Conservatives, can become leader, uh, the first Labour leader in almost a decade in a great city like York. It really is a privilege. Um, um, I was wondering if each of you can tell us why you became a councillor and, and what's the best thing about the job of being a councillor. Maybe if we start with James. Sure. Um, I wanted to be a councillor for the same reasons I entered politics and why I'm a member of this party. I want to play my part in creating a society where someone's hard work and talents determine the rewards that they get in life and not the school you went to, not the family that you were born into. And the, the best thing 
about being a council and being a leader of a council is actually putting Labour values into action. We are in local government in England, the Labour Party in government in England, and in York we're reversing a million pounds worth of cuts that were put in place by Conservatives and Liberal Democrats. We're using innovation such as turning our city centre Wi-Fi to help local businesses, and we've even set up an independent fairness commission led by the Archbishop of York looking at how we create that fairer society, and that's what Labour does in local government. Well, it may sound corny, but I actually wanted to make a difference, and it's amazing when you can actually, you actually do make a difference, and it's, it's amazing when somebody is sharing with you a, with a, a problem, and you're thinking, actually, I can help you with that, and I, I know how to resolve that situation, and it could be an individual uh, coming with you with a complaint about a housing repair, or it could be a uh, change in council policy that will affect thousands of people in your borough. Um, I'm chair of our um, housing and regeneration committee, and putting tough questions and you know scrutinising. Uh, tough things on behalf of your residents is, is, is really rewarding and, and something re why I became a councillor. Um, ben. Um, I got a uh, tweet of Harriet Harman asking me to stand, so um, <laughs> that's the reason I stood. And also the fact that I couldn't, the idea that going to my local polling station on May the 5th and not being able to vote for a Labour candidate was just ridiculous. It's just, we just need to stand everywhere and... The, uh, the best part of being a councillor is obviously the community work, going out there, speaking to people and uh, getting on with things. And um, also, as the only Labour councillor on my district, um, I get um, supporters from all over the district, not just my ward, contacting me, asking me to uh, help them and contact their local councillor. So it's uh, yeah, really rewarding and, um, yeah. So what would be helpful for everybody here? is what's your top tip or bit of advice that you'd give to someone who's thinking about becoming a councillor? James? I would say be brave enough to do it. You know, this is a party that's going places, we're recapturing the centre ground, and there are no no-go areas. I mean, in York, for example, we won a ward. We took the leader of the council seat, a Liberal Democrat, his predecessor that had been in that ward 38 years, and you can go out there and you can do it. And working people need to have a voice in these tough times and Labour and you are the only people that are going to give those people a voice so stand up, be counted, get involved and do it. Josie? Um, just get involved. I was a party member for 15 years and I thought I didn't really have the skills um, to, to, to stand but after seeing the danger and what was happening in my community, I felt, you know, I must do something. I must stand against the BNP. And we need people to stand against the Tory cuts in our communities. So we really need people to stand and just get involved. It doesn't matter if you just join the party or you've been a party member for 30 years. You know, you have something to contribute and we all have different skills that we can contribute in our, our um, council chambers. And Ben... Um, yeah, like the others say, just, just do it. Just go out there, stand, take the fight to the Tories and the Lib Dems in your wards. Um, you, might, you might think you have little chance of winning, but who knows? You just put the fight up and uh, you get a lot of help. I, um, I put out on Twitter and Stace Williams designed my leaflet for me and I got it printed and I even raised money on Twitter just to... People out there want Labour councillors in all over the country, in the South and the South West. We just... We need to put the fight up and we just need to put councillors up in every single ward we can. Right. So, I wanted to, to say thank you to the hard-working councillors, not just the ones that are here up on the panel, but the, the many other councillors that are sat here in, in the room and, and are maybe watching this at home, and the work that they do... Uh, not just for Labour but for their communities and the people that they're there uh, to represent. Um, we've got a chance now, um, I think we've got time to take some questions from the floor. Um, I'm going to take a couple of rounds of free. So can I see the guy right at the back with the tie on stood up there? And then uh, the lady holding the bag and then 
the man uh, with, with the rolled up agenda or whatever it is. Chet yeah, Chet shirt. Yeah, you've just sat down when it was you that I was... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's you. you, it's you. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to fit... I, I was running through a list of descriptors and I thought I'd nailed that one, but obviously not. OK, f first question. Thanks, Chair. Um, Councillor Mike Lesurf, lone Labour councillor on Brentwood Borough Council. Um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Chair, um, Eric Pickles is my MP. <laughs> that, that always sounds like a confessional. Um, due to his ideological cuts agenda, we've lost our information centre, environmental services, and we almost lost our beloved town hall that was owned by the Queen in 1957. What message do you have for the people of Brentwood about the effect of Eric Pickles' cuts in his own backyard? OK, ne ne next question. Hi, I'm Kate Haig. I'm the uh, leader of the Labour Group on Gloucester City Council. As we meet here today in Birmingham's High Court, they're hearing a judicial review into Gloucestershire County Council's disgraceful decision to close libraries in the most deprived wards in the county, not in Stowe-on-the-Wold, but in my ward of Matson and Robinswood. Do you believe that cutting vital services like this will inflict damage on our communities? Final question. Uh, I, I'm John Bull. I'm leader of the Labour group on Bath and North East Somerset Council. And if you think that sounds like a desperate job, there are, there are five of us. We hold the balance of power and we're holding the Lib Dems to account on who rule the council. My question is that I understand there are big changes proposed in council tax benefit and housing benefit which are going to uh, affect the most worst off members of our communities. Uh, would you like to comment on that and also tell us how uh, in Parliament MPs and how we in councils can combat them? Okay, some really good questions there. Uh, James, do you want to, 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 to come back on those first? Well, it's not surprising that Eric Pickles wants cuts. I don't know whether you're aware there's a document called the, the Pickles Papers, which uh, shows you the trials and tribulations of when he was leader of Bradford Council. And it shows that he's not a friend of local government at all. He wants these cuts, and he's using the cutting down of the deficit as an attack on local government. Also, in terms of uh, cutting services, it obviously has an impact on our communities and uh, on the uh, services that people rely on. And we have to make sure that Labour and local government is standing up for the most vulnerable in our society, trying to protect services and trying to protect jobs. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is by winning the next general election and in local government being innovative to try and uh, blunt the harshness of the cuts that are coming down from central government. But the housing benefit and the council tax changes is incredibly worrying. I've got a paper coming to my cabinet next week showing the impact of those changes in York. I've been talking about it with other leaders in Yorkshire and Humber saying we need a regional coordination and the party probably needs a national coordination uh, over this issue. York has higher rents um, than the regional average and therefore by actually having a capping on the housing benefit it's actually going to increase our homelessness dramatically. And these are ordinary, you know, working people that are struggling. And I fear for also the, the taxing, as it were, of aspiration. Because if you're, you know, in your 40s, you don't earn a lot and you're on housing benefit, but your, your child wants to go off to university, what's to stop, therefore, your property being seen as the government as under-occupied and therefore having your housing benefit cut so you have to move house? That isn't fair, and that's what we need to stand against. Josie, do you want to come in? 